If you've noticed, the first exercise covers all six strings, goes from the lowest string to the highest string, and then returns back to the bass. And this exercise, of course, covers all six strings and goes down. So I think to myself, okay, I remember in the right hand to take a full stroke, to make a good sound. I remember that in this, I want to dampen on the D, then let the fingers free to pluck, and then put the fingers back down as a unit, and feel free to pluck. And I'm balancing the right hand, I'm calibrating it, I'm making it know it can rest, it can be active, it can support. All these things, all these principles are starting to become quite subconscious, quite natural. And then with this, I'm moving the fingers across the guitar, I'm staying behind the fret, I'm turning the fingers in towards the instrument, and I'm not letting fingers that are not active become pointing up, becoming very far away from the fingerboard, I'm keeping them close, and I'm trying to create a feeling of individual control between each finger. So just as an example, but it's very just precise, quite short. Look at my other fingers, two, three and four, pointing in towards the guitar. In the right hand, the fingers dampen when the thumb plays, and the thumb is playing, the fingers are there, it's vice versa, there's control. And then I'll maybe change to the two. Same deal when I change to the two. I'm making the bottom one, just to, just to sort of announce the change of finger, I'm making it a little longer, I'm kind of... Good, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to try this all together. We'll do each pattern twice, so we'll go up, down, up, down, then we change, okay? Here we go. So now you're thinking about, I don't know, five or six things at the same time, okay? But as a guitar player, we need to be thinking... I, I call it thinking polyphonically, because we're a polyphonic instrument, we play more than one line. So often we have to look at the melody, look at the bass, look at the individual inner lines, to, you know, the alto voice. So we have to create this idea from the word go of thinking more than one way, yeah? We're not just playing one single line of music. Um, so we have to create a, a flexibility in the fingers that we can look after all these things, you know? It's a way of thinking. Okay, here we go. One, two. A little separation between the fingers. So this is the second time we go up. So when we reach the bottom. Very good. So now we're on the second finger and we're on the sixth fret. Now don't let that index touch that second finger. Very good. And then we change again. For me, it's essential to do those two things. The dynamics, the louds and the quiets, piano and the forte, this is the idea of starting to put interest into the music, starting to control the shape of the music, trying to be able to crescendo when you need the tension and the drama, and trying to be able to decrescendo to pianissimo when you need, say, some sort of atmosphere that you want to create. So you don't just practice these exercises boringly, you know? You actually perhaps practice them. Sometimes varying, sometimes crescendoing to the top of the guitar, or the high, the high point, and decrescendoing to the bass, and then reversing that. Okay. Also, that polyphonic way of thinking, thinking in a multi sort of faceted way about your technique, I start to trick myself. I start to say, okay, I'm going to accent a certain finger. I'm going to accent the index finger. I might accent the ring finger. Something like that, just to, just to start to say, okay, I have really good individual control of my fingers. I can ask one finger to play louder when I want. Maybe I'm trying to play the bass of something quite... But I want the treble to be really legato. I want 
this idea of a, of a very legato phrase at the top line and a staccato bass. So I would practice. Really staccato and maybe choose one. It's maybe a little bit like being schizophrenic where you're thinking about all these different characters. But what it can do is it starts to give you real control. And sometimes what happens is we go to a master class or we get a piece that we really like and we go, oh, I want that note to be staccato. And that's the first time we think about making that technique. And that's impossible because it's, it's only in that piece, it's only relative to that piece of music that suddenly you ask yourself to do it. It's hard, you know. So I'm just making this line really, really short, but keeping the... I would hate the first time I ever do that for it to be in the grand overture. I would rather like that I could do that with my technique and then I just apply it to that moment in a particular piece, you know, of any piece, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, you know. Um, so it's varying this technical idea which is really important. Okay, so that was basically an individual warm-up for the right hand, an individual warm-up for the left hand, but very simple but with all these musical ideas and control ideas. So before we go on to the next thing, does anyone have any questions about that, or any anything that they'd like me to clarify about it, or just or anything? Any questions about it? Uh, See, uh, uh, if it's possible, if it's possible to do it every day, I would lie to you. No, it is possible. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible to do it every day. Absolutely, absolutely right. And this is the principle you have in your head. <coughs> The problem is that we like playing pieces. Right? We like playing pieces. Uh, the technique is not so... I find it enjoyable, right? If I'm honest with you, I kind of find technique enjoyable. Now, maybe I'm a bit boring. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm weird, right? But I quite like technique. I kind of find it fun, you know? Um, I think if you sit all day and you go like this... This, this is boring. But if you go... And, and you have musical ideas with the technique, and you try and, I mean, I, I think one of the biggest problems with technique is people play it really boringly, you know, and then maybe they make music and it's a little bit dull sometimes, you know, and I think you have to practice technique in a musical fashion, you know, scales are very lyrical, you know, and not just major scales, you know, minor scales are really super musical, they're super lyrical, um, so I think you have to think of them as as little musical ideas, little musical gems, and you have to, 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 to vary the, like I say, the dynamic, the tempo, the articulations, the capital, the gato, all these things. Make them interesting, make them more like the music you play in a piece. And you know, yes, we like playing pieces, but identify within the piece the technique that is required. Okay? The most obvious example of that would be for guitar is, say, tremolo. To play a tremolo piece, you need to develop a tremolo technique. So you maybe need to try and think, okay, I need to, to, to get a few studies on tremolo and, and build up to it. The wrong thing to do is, is recuerdo style, you know, just begin to play this piece, it's crazy, you know, or one of the great barrios pieces. I mean, like, no, it's just that, you know. When you, when, you, when you want to play tremolo, you have to develop that technique, you know. Um, that, that the, the principle behind it is, it has to, the technique has to support the ideas. And sometimes people play pieces that are so difficult, they have no ideas, because just playing it is hard, you know? And that's not really good music making. All that is is just kind of reinforcing, well, bad habits, you know? Um, what, we, what we need to do is have a technique that serves our musical ideas, if we want to play it with power, or we want to play it with pace, you know, it, all these things, you know? Um, so yes, every day, if I can, if I can. I, I would lie to you to say I can do it every day, but I certainly do it most other days, you know? Um, and like I was saying at the beginning, we're doing it today in quite a relaxed fashion and I'm going over every detail and there's a lot more to come, but the idea is you condense this. You know, if you have 15 minutes, you do this. Okay, I feel really comfortable. You check yourself, maybe look in a mirror and think, yeah, I'm oh, not <laughs> relaxed, you know, it's fine. You sort of think, okay, yeah, they're waking up. You know, maybe the first few times you do it, it takes an hour, and then it takes 45 minutes, and then you, you have little versions that you condense. 
But I sometimes do just a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, when I don't have a concert and I'm at home and I have plenty of time. And I just sit and, you know, you can do it with the television on. <laughs> I'm not saying, don't concentrate on what you're doing, but you know, once it becomes a little bit more automatic, you can have the newspaper, you know, and you can, oh, Messi, 60 goals for Barcelona, fantastic, <laughs> what a player, you know, something like this, but you know, or something, but you know. Um, and don't do it with anyone else in the room because it's terribly boring. <laughs> you know, you know, you know.